Two weeks ago, I helped us consider much of what our parishes have gone through in the past, including uh, sorrows, hurts that we've gone through. And it's important to acknowledge our past and to, to name the grief so that we can help God to reach into our hearts for a greater healing and enable us to more easily embark on, on the newness in our future, especially through the journey of faith, pastoral planning that we face. But it's not just the difficulties and the sorrows. We also have a lot to celebrate going on within our parishes, a lot that we can thank God for. And so today, I want to give a kind of annual report for our three parishes. Now, when you hear annual report, maybe you first think of the financials, and, and that's certainly true. You know, each of our parishes has the responsibility of being transparent of how your financial contributions are utilized. And uh, so this weekend, I wanted to put the, uh, an income and expense report insert into the bulletin for each parish. Um, I have to apologize, though. Um, uh, I was looking at the bulletins in the back. It looks like we didn't get it in this weekend, so that's my fault. So we'll get it in the next week so you'll be able to see yours here. Um, for those not at St. Mary's, yours should be in your bulletin inserts in your bulletins in your parishes. So if you pick up a copy, you'll be able to see the, the financial report uh, part of this. Um, in the front page of the bulletin this weekend, too, I reflect upon God's call to return back to the Lord from what he gives to us. You now, for Christians, money is never our final goal. Heaven is our final goal. And so our financial support has spiritual effects, both for the one who gives and also for those who receive from what is given. And so I want to thank you for your generous support of our parishes and our school. So let's begin considering the kind of spiritual effects that God does through our communities, how he can use our participation. So it begins by really the two ways in which we receive God's grace the most, which is prayer and the sacraments. So the sacraments are really the foundation of, of what we do within our parishes. And the source and summit of our faith is the celebration of Mass, the Eucharist, the sacrament of the Eucharist. And so every week we can come here and we can unite ourselves to the offering of Jesus Christ to God the Father here upon the altar. Offer ourselves to Him and then receive back from Him the spiritual food that will sustain us for the rest of the week. And so through the course of the year, we have over 300 Masses in our parishes. 160 about on Sundays and 140 about on weekdays. 55 of those Masses are called Pro Popolo Masses. They're Masses for the people. So they're ones that I offer for every single member of our parish. And we, we, we can't underestimate the power, the incredible power that the Mass has in our lives. As St. Padre Pio said, it would be easier for the world to survive without the Son than to do so without the Holy Mass. So if we look at the other sacraments that we have, the, in this past year, our three parishes have welcomed 32 individuals as adopted children of God the Father through baptism. We had 22 first communicants to receive Jesus' body and blood for the very first time. A month ago, Archbishop Lucas came to St. Joseph and confirmed 19 of our young people from our three parishes, giving them this greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit to assist them in the ever more challenging things that we face in our lives. We celebrated with joy 13 weddings this past year, giving those couples the graces to be able to live out Christian marriage. We also offered 26 funerals, commending our deceased brothers and sisters to the Lord with the hope of eternal life. Of course, I have no idea how many times, how many anointings were given or how many times we visited people and brought them communion. I can't count how many times God's mercy was bestowed through the sacrament of reconciliation, though I do know that, that many of you take advantage of me having reconciliation before weekend masses, and we also have that opportunity at the, after the uh, the school mass here at St. Mary's. 
The second way in which we receive God's grace, as I mentioned earlier, is not just through sacraments, but also through prayer. And there's many ways in which we foster prayer within our three parishes. So I'm not going to be able to highlight every single way in which we do this. Um, This month of October is the month of the rosary. And so many groups get together throughout the year to to meditate upon the mysteries of Jesus' life, asking for Mary's intercession using the rosary. This past Wednesday, the religious ed families uh, gathered together at Mary's Grotto at St. Jane Francis to pray the rosary together. The rosary is prayed every Wednesday here at St. Mary's for the success of our seven parish family in the future. Um, If you arrive early before Mass on the weekend, you can often join the praying of the rosary. Our churches are are always open. It's a beautiful thing about Catholic churches. We're open for us to be able to come in at any time and pray before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And there's also numerous times in which Eucharistic adoration and you mean exposition of the Blessed Sacrament occurs, including the First Friday devotions that we started more recently to the Sacred Heart here at St. Mary's. We have a a number of prayer groups where individuals get together, some men groups here at St. Mary's, some women's groups at St. Jane Francis, the prayer warriors at St. Joseph. Some found great fruit in participating in the CEC, um, Christians Encounter Christ program. This past Lent was promoted the Live Lent Together program. We had almost 100 people involved in 13 small groups across our parishes, joining together to pray and meditate upon the scripture together. You'll be hearing more about the Live Lent Together again this year after, after we get through Christmas. Hopefully we can invite more of us to, to encounter Jesus through his sacred word. Stations of the Cross during Lent, including the dramatization version that the St. Joseph's youth will do during Holy Week. The Sunday after Easter, we call upon Jesus' divine mercy This past year's service was at St. Joseph. And we do all this prayer because we believe what our first reading says today, that the prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds, and it does not rest until it reaches its goal. Prayer also is transformative, just like the sacraments. Of course, there's other things that we go on, too. We help form one another in our faith. So we have a lot of faith education going on. Our religious education programs at our three parishes, as well as St. Mary's School, are designed to assist parents in helping form your children in the faith. So last year, our religious education program formed 122 children total among for for grades K through 6, 50 in grades 7 and 8, and 73 in 9 through 12. St. Mary's School had 55 students last year. So I want to thank especially all of our catechists and our teachers that make that happen. It would be impossible to do that without them. Myself, I've been trying to be more present to each of those programs. Um, Though with religious ed, it means I can only be there a third of the time each as I've got to make my way around each Wednesday. Um, I also try to visit the classrooms in the school on Wednesdays. I've given kind of vocation talks to introduce myself to all the kids and kind of show them, you know, how do you become a priest? What's that like? Um, Recently at the school, we've been learning more about the Mass. I've been showing them various sacred items and what goes on uh, during that so they can understand it better. Um, Last year, too, during the the, um, summer, St. Joseph Parish hosted the Totus Tuus program for all three of our parishes. We had about 50 kids in the day program and 25 youth in the evening one. St. Joseph Youth, also this spring, they went through the Alpha program, also inviting friends from from school to come and join them and learn more about Jesus. It's an example to us of how to be a witness, how to evangelize. Uh, We also have adult formation that we do within our parishes. We have several Bible study groups that go on. We have the RCA program that's designed to help individuals Individuals that are interested in learning more about the Catholic faith, give them an opportunity to do that. Last year, we had one individual make a profession of faith and and join our Catholic communities. Um, This year, we've got a number of other people investigating. Um, We get together and I lead the classes on uh, Thursday evenings and joined by a few other Catholics from our communities who just want to learn more uh, about our rich faith. Um, Also, we're called by Jesus 
to do acts of charity, to move outside of our own communities, out into our, our towns, and, and to serve others as well. And so again, there's all sorts of ways in which this has happened during this past year. Uh, the St. Jane Francis Outreach Ministry helped 16 families in need in their, our area with all sorts of needs like rent, utilities, other things. Um, all three of our parishes have helped collect food or baby supplies for places like Birthright or Bright Horizons. Uh, the quilters at St. Jane Francis co- completed 94 quilts donated to shelters, Birthright, Orphan Grain Train, etc. Um, there's a group of ladies here at St. Mary's that have been doing sewing for Africa. In June, uh, St. Joseph joined the other Pierce churches to be Hands for Christ, where they do different odd jobs around the community for those in need. Uh, last school year, the students at St. Mary's did a drive for Orphan Grain Train, and the preschoolers went over to the hospital to go and sing for those that were ill. Uh, St. Jane Francis and St. Jane and St. Mary's collected school supplies for Franciscan missions for children in Central and South America. The confirmation students from all three of our parishes this last year helped serve meals at the rescue mission in Norfolk. St. Jane Francis uh, students will be doing their, their trick-or-treat for the Randolph Food Pantry, as well as Mercy Meals coming up. Groups like the, the Knights of Columbus, the Foresters, the St. Jane Francis PCCW, the St. Mary's Guild, other groups, each have their own ways of serving that certainly are more than I can mention um, just in this brief time. So I apologize if I miss any of the things that you happen to be involved in and serve with. Um, when we do all these things, we help fulfill what it says in today's psalm, that the Lord hears the cry of the poor and we help him respond. We also have various social and fundraising events that happen throughout our year, both at St. Jane Francis and St. Mary's. They have their, their fall dinner each, and St. Mary's School has a back-to-school brunch for the teachers and the school dinner later in the year. St. Jane Francis' uh, CYO group has a brunch that they do. I was able to just get in on uh, St. Joseph's ice cream social, which happened just as I was arriving, and the St. Joseph Youth Group has a high social coming up here right before Thanksgiving as well as Easter breakfast later on in the year. The Knights of Columbus and Pierce have soup supper and pancake feed, and the Randolph and Osmond Council had two fish fries benefits this past year as well. And among the things that St. Jane Francis PCCW ladies do was a a Mother's Love event with 200 people attending to honor mothers this past May. Um, Also, a number of the PCCW ladies have been feeding your priest with various meals, so I find very appreciative of of that, especially when some weeks get kind of crazy. It's nice having that. Um, The end of 2021, St. Joseph Parish celebrated the end of the year of St. Joseph with a a celebration, which I wish I could have been there during that year to celebrate their their patron saint with them. Um, During that year, they we're looking to get a statue of St. Joseph, and they have it and are planning to put together a, a grotto um, to be able to display their patron saint. So many other things that are happening within our parishes that I can't uh, mer- mention um, just in this time. But there's one more th- event that I wanted to mention before I finish, and that is the Eucharistic procession that we had September 17th. Because I was incredibly moved to see everybody's devotion to our Lord in the Eucharist who participated. And it was wonderful to have an overflowing church here at St. Mary's and to hear the sung prayer expressed with such energy and unity among our three parishes. So I want to thank everybody who helped make that event possible. Uh, We had about 225 people that were out praying and walking the shape of the cross through the streets here in the community. And it really expresses our desire to bring Jesus to everybody outside our walls, everyone who may not even know him yet. And it's something that I wanted to do my entire priesthood to do, to do processions like this. But it owns one that can only happen when you as a community want to do that. I can't do it on my own. We all have to work together to make it, it happen. It's a testament to the fact that our church isn't just simply the priests. It's not simply the clergy. But... It's mainly you. You are the church. 
It's an example of being one church together with our three communities, of doing something that's not just for ourselves, it's not for any one of our parishes, not just to raise money, but to do something for the Lord. And it should be an example of hope for us in contemplating what we can create in our future families of parishes. The Eucharistic procession should be a stepping point in our imagination to really think about how in the future we can carry out the Archdiocesan vision of one church encountering Jesus, equipping disciples and living mercy. We can have confidence that the big goal that we're being challenged to of becoming missional communities 